truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Welcome to the Mojave Courier. I'm B-Town, and I make videos about games I love. Today, we're ranking every unique weapon from the legendary Fallout New Vegas, which isn't just one of the best Fallout games, it's one of the greatest RPGs of all time. In order to make this list, weapons can't just be rare or powerful, they must be truly unique. So weapons like the Ranger Sequoia Industrial Hand and the Saturnite Fist Superheated don't make the list. There are a ton of unique weapons in New Vegas, so to make this a little bit more digestible, I've broken the video into tiers. And first up, we have the bottom tier, Not So Good Springs. I'd rather French kiss a casador than use one of these. Starting it off with a bang, the worst unique weapon in the wasteland is Euclid's Seafinder. This weapon is actual garbage, but there's a lot to love about it too. You get it from a kid named Max in Freeside. He's playing with it like it's a toy, but it's actually a rangefinder that drops a beam of energy from orbit. But don't worry about Max, he's completely safe because this weapon is totally harmless until you complete the Lucky Old Sun and redirect the power from Archimedes 2. You can buy it off of Max for 1,000 caps or just wait until he falls asleep and pickpocket it. And then you've earned yourself an orbital laser to drop on anyone you want once a day. Yep, you can only use this thing once every in-game day. Unless you're a dirty cheater who uses console commands. It has awkward handling, inconsistent blast damage, and a significant delay between when you pull the trigger and the beam actually drops, meaning you miss most of the time. Euclid's is basically a meme, but I actually love that this weapon exists. In a way, it's peak New Vegas. It's got great lore, awesome character work, a fantastic quest associated with it, a touch of bleak irony, and it feels like it's just an elaborate troll from Obsidian. But if you're actually interested in doing explosive damage, I would suggest just throwing grenades instead. Missing Laser Pistol. This one should just stay missing. It's part of a Brotherhood of Steel questline. You get it from pistol packing. It has terrible stats overall. It's actually worse than just a regular laser pistol you'd find in a dumpster somewhere. Because it's a quest item, it's technically a holdout weapon, so you can sneak it into casinos. But you're better off trying to tickle Benny to death. Next up is actually a combo of two awful weapons. Van Graaff Laser and Plasma Rifle. If you want to make it to the Strip, you have to go through Freeside, which is a pretty nice neighborhood if you don't mind the jet crisis. But you're not going to make it to the Lucky 38 unless you have a pocket full of caps. There's a bunch of ways to make money in Freeside, but if you swing by the Silver Rush, Gloria will give you an entry-level position guarding the front door. That's where you get to choose between a plasma rifle or a laser rifle, both of which are straight downgrades from the normal versions. Absolute turbo trash, and you would expect much better from a literal arms dealer. You generally just use them for the quest line, but technically you can keep them for the rest of the run if you let the Silver Rush explode. Blowing up the Silver Rush is a fantastic idea, but I would advise just leaving these weapons in the wreckage. Golden Gloves. Our first visit to the Strip. Time to take in the sights. Stop right there, criminal scum! These gloves are really easy to get. You just rip them off the mantle behind the bar in the Lucky 38. They do a breathtaking one damage per hit. But boxing gloves inflict a unique damage type called fatigue that knocks enemies out. It's certainly not the best status effect, but the golden gloves deal 50 fatigue damage, which is the most of any glove, making them the best of the worst. I mean, knocking out enemies is kind of hilarious. You could just kind of Charlie horse them to death. But despite abnormally high comedy potential, there's really no practical use. There really aren't that many truly terrible weapons in New Vegas, so we're already jumping to our next tier, Goodish Springs. These weapons are okay. They're capable, if not a little situational, or in some cases, they come with a big downside. Elijah's jury-rigged Tesla Cannon. This Tesla Cannon has zero spread, making it incredibly accurate, but the durability is tragic. And despite having jury-rigged in the name, you can't even use the jury rig perk on it. Dr. Klein's Glove. Hits from this glove reduce energy weapon skills and weakens the strength of the target. And if you hit a crit, it drains even more stats, reducing their damage threshold. It's crazy easy to get. You find it in Higgs Village and House 101. These gloves work reasonably well inside of Old World Blues itself, but has very little utility outside of the DLC. Dinner Bell. Aside from a few exceptions, the uniques in New Vegas cannot be modified. When you take a critical look at the dinner bell, it's basically just a fully upgraded shotgun, but with very, very low durability. 
Not that it's a bad weapon, I just think it's really hard to make the case for using this over either a fully modded shotgun or just a riot shotgun in general. Old Glory. It looks really cool, but it's just a pool cue. And it belonged to the most annoying, overhyped, and chatty villain in Fallout history. God, he just annoys me so much. Hashtag, you pissies. Nuka Breaker. This isn't a truly phenomenal weapon, but it's really cool for a bunch of reasons. Number one, it just looks cool. It never gets old, bashing people with a neon sign. Number two, it's a reference to Fallout Nuka Break, which was a popular fan-made YouTube series. That show walked so that Fallout on Prime could run. It's amazing to see developers recognize prominent fans and fanfiction in the community and actually put items from those pieces of fiction into the actual lore of Fallout. It's incredible. All that being said, it's just a reskinned rebar club with better stats and does a little tiny bit of electrical damage on crit. But if you want to smash in style, you can pick this one up from Mick and Ralph's and Freeside. But if they are maybe not living, you can grab it from the gun runners. Cram opener. A bladed gauntlet you get off the body of Little Buster, and it's firmly just okay. Okay stats, okay handling, it's an okay weapon for the early game. You'd probably be better off using it to open cans of cram. Abilene Kid Limited Edition BB Gun. With all of the horrific abominations and hostile factions in the Mojave, a BB gun is never ever ever your best option. But this one does have a few tricks up its sleeve. Crits from this weapon do 70 points of additional damage. If you spec your character correctly, this little BB gun can inflict crazy amounts of pain on even the toughest enemies. But because it's kind of a dice roll most of the time, you'll struggle to kill a rad roach. It's goofy, it's silly, I personally love this weapon. It also has a lot of fun lore and references too. The name itself, Abilene Kid, is a reference to a 1948 movie called The Three Godfathers. It's a throwback to the Red Rider limited edition BB gun from Fallout 2, and it's a reference to the classic A Christmas Story. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Pulse gun. This is the definition of a highly situational weapon. It's an EMP pistol that absolutely decimates robots, but it's practically worthless against anything else. Well, it's also not even that great against every robot in the game. Robots on Big Mountain are immune to EMP damage. And considering there really aren't that many robots in New Vegas compared to other Fallout games, this one's really hard to recommend. And it's tough to get your hands on as well because it's behind a level 100 lock in Vault 34. So you either have to pick the lock or get the key from Nellis Air Force Base. It's not a bad weapon. It's light. It has very low stat requirements. It's a solid anti-robot option really for any build. It's generally pretty smart to grab this weapon if you can and keep it in your pocket for the occasional robo beatdown. The Humble Cudgel. Well, the name's accurate. This is definitely pretty humble. It's just a pipe. It does better damage than a normal pipe, uses less AP, and lasts forever. Here's a little pro pipe PSA. If you lunge at an enemy that's clipped into a rock, you just might also get stuck into that rock. Sturdy Caravan Shotgun. You know it, you love it, you spawn with it. It's a caravan shotgun that gets sturdy. The Sturdy does higher DPS than a normal caravan, but it also has a wider spread, meaning you have to get really close to your target. It's a workhorse weapon that's included with the Courier Stash DLC. This gun definitely doesn't wow me. I find it to be kind of inconsistent. It always gets some early game use, might mess around and defend good springs with it. After popping a few powder gangers, this weapon just rots away in my inventory forever. Liberator. This is a unique machete that does more damage than the standard variant. It's certainly an upgrade, and it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just kind of unremarkable. Honestly, the best part is claiming it from Dead Sea at Camp Nelson. Fuck Caesar's Legion. We don't tolerate misogynistic slave traders in my wasteland. Recompense of the Fallen. By far, not the strongest option for an unarmed run, but I just love the concept here. Getting revenge for your fallen comrades by punching people with the dog tags, it's amazing. 10 out of 10 writing, 4 out of 10 weapon. Embrace of the Mantis King. This is kind of a weird one. You don't really see that many Mantis gauntlets in the game, but this one's really easy to get. You just buy it from Mick and Rouse or the Gunrunners. Compared to a normal gauntlet, the Mantis King has more range, more power, but it also swings slower. It requires 75 unarmed, and it's pretty heavy at 12 pounds. It's also really expensive. By the time you have everything you need to acquire this, there are just way better options at your disposal. Certainly not a bad weapon. I just think it gets outclassed by a lot of its peers. Chopper. 
Tony Tony Chopper. It's a handy dandy little cleaver that you can find at the Wolfhorn Ranch over by Novak. It's an early game staple. It's solid. It's effective. It's easily repaired. You're going to outgrow Chopper relatively quickly, but those early levels, this comes in so clutch. Big Boomer. This is a sawed off shotgun with colossal damage in close quarters combat. All you have to do to get a hold of this one is to negotiate with Old Lady Gibson. Despite its incredible damage, there is one major downside. Unlike other sawed offs, this one doesn't count as a holdout weapon, which is really weird because that's like the major bonus for carrying a sawed off. It's really not that worth it unless you want to roleplay as Mad Max. Nephi's Golf Driver. Golf clubs are generally mediocre, and this one's no different. You get it from Driver Nephi, a fiend found southwest of the strip. It has higher crit damage, but lower durability compared to its base variant. It's pretty forgettable. I cannot imagine anyone leaving Good Springs and heading right to the strip to get this weapon. Unless the PGA comes to the Mojave, you could probably skip this one. Broad Machete. Another courier stash weapon. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, maybe you didn't notice this one in your inventory, because every time you leave Doc Mitchell's house, it's like your computer catches a virus from 2010. It has way higher DPS than the standard variant. It's basically the weapon you use at the start of every melee run. It's better than a lot of things you find in the early game, but it's just not that great. I think it's easier to rank this one higher than the Liberator, because you get it by default, there's no effort, you always have it. Cleansing Flame. This is a unique flamer, which is weird because in New Vegas, flamers are classified as energy weapons. It sets stuff on fire, including your graphics card, because this game is so poorly optimized. Mercenary's Grenade Rifle. Yet another courier stash weapon. This unique actually has one big advantage over the standard grenade launcher. You don't have to have any stats in guns to use this weapon effectively, which is fantastic. And oddly enough, this is one of the few uniques you can mod. Usually pretty grateful to have this weapon at the start of a game. It's really helpful. The stats are kind of a struggle and it has high AP cost when you're using it in the beginning of the game at a time where you have the least amount of AP. It has bad durability and you generally don't have the resources to repair it early game by if you run into something tanky that has a lot of HP, or you could also use it to defend good springs, the Mercenary's Grenade Rifle is generally a pretty decent option. Figaro. This is a straight razor you acquire from Sergio, the barber at the King's School of Impersonation. Lightning fast attack speed, and it has a double critical chance compared to the normal razor. It's great in a pinch, but that fast attack speed normally degrades this weapon incredibly fast. It is most often found dull and broken in my pocket instead of slicing or dicing. Red Victory, Great Bear Grenade Rifle. These are the two grenade rifles you can get from completing loads from Road. You'll get one or the other depending upon your final choice. Fantastic critical damage, but not as good as Thump Thump. But the real issue is that you don't get these until very, very late game. If you speed run Lonesome Road, maybe you can get a hold of these and they'd be more impactful. MF Hyper Breeder Alpha. First of all, the name is hilarious in the modern context. MF Hyper Breeder Alpha sounds like some pathetic Sigma mail course you buy from Andrew Tate, who would 100% be a member of Caesar's League. Region. Recharger pistols are generally pretty bad, but at least this one's fully automatic, which makes it perform much more like a submachine gun. Easily the best recharger pistol in the game. In a pinch, it'll save your life. And if you're on an energy build, I think the case could be made for running this as a primary, but personally, I'd rather just carry it around as a backup for when you run out of ammo. That's my ideal use case, but it requires 50 energy and costs almost 9,000 caps. So it's not something you buy just in case. Okay, let's just take a little break for a minute. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. We've gone through a lot of uniques already, but we have so many more interesting weapons to talk about. And the next section is where things start to really heat up. We're moving on to pretty darn good springs. These are all awesome weapons that you could probably use for an entire run. They might not be the best of the best, but you're going to have a hard time putting these down once you find them. Weathered 10mm pistol. The iconic Fallout pistol. You get this right away from Courier Stash. It's a solid early game option despite being pretty inaccurate. But the most interesting part about this unique is that it accepts mods for the normal 10mm pistol as well. Extended mags, laser sights, silencer. You can kind of trick this thing out. And it's a great option for non gun skill focused builds because the Weathered has zero stat requirements compared to the normal's 25. Mysterious Magnum. It's the Mysterious Stranger's gun. Come on, how cool is that? And every time you switch to this weapon, the Mysterious Stranger's theme will play. 
great rate of fire, really solid DPS, nothing really to gush about in terms of its performance. It's just good because it's a 44 Magnum. But the lore in the fan service here is Chef's Kiss. This is acquired from the Lonesome Drifter in front of the Sunset Sarsaparilla billboard. You can either take it the Western way, or if you have 50 barter, you can grab this during the side quest Talent Pool X2 Antenna. If you play Old World Blues, you can't miss this one because you'll grab it as part of the main quest. Look at this beefy boy. It takes up so much of your screen. Very slow attack speed, but when it connects, it does fantastic damage. And it gets extra damage versus robots and power armor users, which is a nice little bonus. It works fantastic in the DLC. It's not as useful outside of Old World Blues, but it's still pretty good. AER-14 Prototype. It's a laser rifle found on the fifth floor of Vault 22. It's the botanical one with all the overgrown plants and those creepy camouflaging spore carriers. This is arguably one of the best laser rifles in the game. It has great damage, low AP costs, and pretty much it's a straight upgrade in every way. The only downside is really the condition which degenerates really, really quickly. You can't use it that much before you have to repair it, which is something that holds back a lot of weapons, so it's hard to judge it, but because it degenerates so quickly and it's so high in cost in terms of its maintenance, I can totally understand why people don't go out of their way to pick this up all the time, even though it is a massive upgrade. Pushy. Found in Ruby Hill Mine, this is a fantastic displacer glove with awesome damage. This isn't like some earth shattering amazing weapon, but I always really like it. I just love it. It brings me a lot of joy. It makes me happier than the White Glove Society when they find a new orphan. Lelange Carabine. This gun is so tough to get a hold of. It's actually a pain in the butt cheeks to acquire. You get it off Corporal Sterling at Camp McCarran. There's a couple different ways. You can reverse pickpocket him or do something that's way worse. Aside from the scope, this one's barely better than the base version. It is an upgrade, but it's also a ton of drama to get your hands on it. So I usually skip this one. Lil Devil. This might be a hot take because this pistol is definitely a fan favorite. But hear me out. The Little Devil is a 12.7 millimeter pistol that was added in the Gunrunners DLC. Fantastic stopping power, solid DPS, and it's easily one of the strongest holdout weapons in the game. But it has some critical issues that hold it back. It's expensive. 16k caps is crazy. This weapon will be most impactful in the early game, but that's when I'm going to be struggling to put together 16k. Its spread is wild. This gun is incredibly inaccurate, and it doesn't get access to AP rounds. So anyone wearing armor is going to be a huge problem. It would be a slippery slope if I started comparing unique weapons. I just don't know why I would use Little Devil when I could just go to the Dino Bite and steal that gun from Cliff. Gehenna. Oh, the Vendatron made a mistake selling me a flaming sword. At this point, they should just have my photo up on the wall like, do not sell to this maniac. He will not pass a background check. Fantastic sword. I'd say it's a, a fair bit more style than substance. Fire damage itself doesn't stack, so when you inflict consecutive hits on the target, it makes the effect last longer. The overall damage is really nice, but you could be well dead before your target burns out. Knock knock. From fire damage to a fire axe. This one is found in Camp Searchlight, which is an absolutely awful place to visit. Ghouls, scorpions, the Crimson Caravan, and sweet, innocent NCR troopers who turn their back on citizens wielding an axe. It's a hot mess over there, but Knock Knock is definitely worth the trouble. This axe is awesome. Two-step goodbye. This weapon is so unserious. It's a ballistic fist with a twist. When you kill somebody with a crit, the target will then explode like a grenade two seconds later for an additional 175 damage. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to see what the issue is here. Close unarmed combat, plus stuff exploding everywhere. You end up dealing a massive amount of damage to yourself and your companions. It's sloppy, but so much fun. Like everything in life that's fun, it's also really expensive. So just know how dangerous it is going into it before you spend the caps at the vendor truck. And it should be avoided at all costs in a permadeath run. Dr. Mobius's glove. Not only is this the glove of the best old world blues character, it also inflicts frenzy. There's nothing better than getting enemies to fight themselves. It feels so amazing. Percentage chance is rather low, so it doesn't happen that often, but it can be super helpful when it does. Easily the best scientist glove in the game. Bar none. Thump thump. 
really solid grenade rifle that you can snag from the boomers during ants misbehaving. Easy to get, great stats, big area of effect. It's everything you want in a grenade rifle. Thump Thump is devastating under the right conditions. Unfortunately, you're just gonna end up hurting yourself a lot because of the massive splash damage. You can't, you literally can't even use this thing indoors. I find Thump Thump fantastic for starting an engagement, firing a grenade into a crowd to kind of kick off the fight and then switching to something a little bit safer and more reliable once the battle pops off. Love and hate. Anything that lets you cosplay as Radio Rahim from Do The Right Thing gets a vote of support from me. Love and Hate are a pair of spiked knuckles you find on a Viper Gang leader in Bonnie Springs. Awesome damage with insane durability. An absolute staple for any unarmed run. The fight with the Vipers can be a little sketchy early game, but it's worth the pain. I usually run right there from Good Springs to get my hands on these as early as possible. Sleepy Time, one of the premier cannibal clappers in the Mojave. It's a 10mm submachine gun that you get from the gun runner. It's expensive, but it's one of the most savage holdout weapons in the game. Don't get me wrong, it's powerful across the board. Tight spread, high DPS. SMGs tend to kind of top out in terms of their DPS in the late game, but this weapon is a workhorse and it can get you into endgame without really breaking a sweat. I honestly don't know who I dislike more, the White Gloves or Caesar's Legion. Like, I might give it to the cannibals just because of the sheer grossness, but then again, they can only eat so many people while Caesar's Legion can literally destroy all the of society. Both are terrible and horrific, but the White Gloves, ugh, they haunt my dreams. Blade of the East. This is some Final Fantasy Cloud Strife shit. You get it off of Lanius at the very end of the game, like literally the final scene. You could potentially use it for a few minutes max. It's low-key one of the best weapons in the game, but I just cannot put it any higher because you can't use the damn thing unless you cheat. I cheated it into my inventory and I was like running around because that's what you do for videos, right? Like I, I run around and use weird weapons and weird ways, cause a ton of chaos, have a bunch of fun. But I had to, I have to confess, I felt really bad about Lily. You could see it in the footage. There was this long pause when I was in Vats and I was thinking to myself, has YouTube turned me into a monster? I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake, not sleeping, because I'm thinking about this. Pew Pew. This weapon is pretty great, even though I rarely ever use it. It's a laser pistol that fires two shots at once and does absolutely fantastic damage. It breaks pretty quick, but that's not a huge problem considering laser pistols are everywhere around the Mojave and you can repair it relatively easily. The real issue here is that it's a reward for collecting 50 Sunset Sarsaparilla Star Caps. Not happening, Malcolm. Sorry, my dude. Blood Nap. Bowie knives are basically a straight upgrade to combat knives, and this is a big upgrade. It's pretty scary to acquire, you have to yoink it out of a telephone pole in the divide. Lots of crazy creatures, but you can sneak in and get it and avoid any combat. Super high damage, and it even gives you plus 10 sneak. This is a power creep DLC weapon for sure. It's just miles above the standard melee weapons in the base game. She's Embrace. You pick it up from Rite of Passage during pretty much every run through of Honest Hearts. It's practically unbreakable, incredibly powerful, but what are the downsides? The view model is fucking gigantic. It takes up most of your screen, and it's not pretty to look at, to say the least. It's also super heavy. <laughs> this may deserve to be a little higher on the list, but look at it. I mean, just look at it. Vance's 9mm. This is just straight up one of the coolest weapons in New Vegas. It's a 9mm SMG that has gone missing from Vicky and Vance's casino. Big shout out to Prim Slim, coldest robot in the Mojave. That's my man. It's based on the real world grease gun, looks crispy, can dole out tons of damage. And the quest to get it is really awesome. Q35 Matter Modulator. A shockingly strong plasma rifle you can get from the Repcon HQ that's also Marvin the Martian's favorite weapon. The Illudium Q36 Explosive Space Modulator. I mean, how could you not love Obsidian? Like, massive bonus points for using a Looney Tunes reference as the name of this weapon. And who doesn't love turning enemies into piles of toxic goo? Compliance Regulator. This laser pistol encourages its targets to be compliant by inflicting a paralysis effect. And you can even raise the chances of inflicting paralysis by using Laser Commander. Against large groups of enemies, this weapon isn't the best, but it really shines when you're up against single heavy targets. That way you can just spam shots and keep them paralyzed like this death claw. If you're doing a permadeath run, this weapon might not be a great choice. It'll let you down a lot, but it's super worth it. And it comes from Honest Hearts, which is just an outstanding DLC. That gun. 
right off the rip, you have to love this gun because it's a Blade Runner reference. Straight up. It's also a classic that appeared in Fallout 1 and 2, and if that wasn't enough, it's sold by Cliff Briscoe, the best vendor in New Vegas. But speaking of Cliff, you really don't want to let him catch you stealing this. He can then take it off of you, making this gun completely inaccessible for the entire run. It fires 5.56, which is super easy to come by, does incredible damage, and it has a really high crit multiplier as well. I consider putting it even higher because it's a personal favorite and a staple of all of the runs I do. I always get this gun. The spread is pretty high, it's kind of inaccurate, and the rest of the list is full of so many amazing guns, I actually could not find a spot any higher. Hollow Rifle. Ah, uh, dead money. It's an energy sniper rifle that looks like a grenade launcher and then sprays energon cubes like a shotgun. If you're specced into energy, this is a very, very, very solid option. This one can also be modded, but be warned, you have to actually get the mods inside of Dead Money. And one of those mods is actually bugged, so you can make this weapon literally unbreakable. It's probably problematic because it's so OP, but it's one of the most fun ways to play through New Vegas. Lucky early game beast. You grab it from a floor safe in the Bison Steve Hotel. It has considerably better stats than the 357, and it requires zero gun skills. Lucky is just an all-rounder, a real bedrock weapon for New Vegas. Aside from the Courier's stash weapon, this is probably one of my most used uniques of all time, just because it's so generally good in every circumstance and on every character build. Gobi Campaign Scout Rifle. This rifle is found in a gun case at the sniper's nest above Cottonwood Cove. Unfortunately, you are going to need 100 lockpick because there's no key for this case. And if you try to force it and fail, it will make this weapon inaccessible for the entire run. Like the other snipers in the game, this weapon is incredibly powerful, but really what sets it above and beyond for me is the lore. It's a rifle based on a fictional desert campaign that took place during the Great War. It's just one of those thoughtful, interesting, insightful touches that makes the world of Fallout feel more real, feel bigger than the scope of the games themselves. This one is, is fantastic. If you have 100 lockpick, this is definitely worth grabbing. Red Glare. Fully automatic rocket launcher. It's heavy. It's super expensive to use because you just dump rockets. But I can't stress this enough. It's a fully automatic rocket launcher. Bozar. I've seen lots of people call this one one of the worst guns in the game. I really don't agree at all. It's an LMG you get from Gunrunners. It's a New Vegas version of the Bozar from Fallout 2. But look at that fire rate. It's a fast firing barrel stuffer. If you get in enemies' faces, it just totally shreds them. The real success here is if you use it almost like an assault rifle. Jump into the middle of the battle, get busy with it, get in people's faces, get aggressive. And the Bozar will like rarely let you down. It's actually really, really, really strong. The Rat Slayer. It's found in the Brock Flower Cave, guarded by giant rats. If you're using Wild Wasteland, which you always should be, by the way, they're called the Rodents of Unusual Size. This little thing is actually mean. It comes kitted out with a night vision scope, silencer, and extended mags. It has a massive 5x grip multiplier, meaning it has insane sneak attack potential. Survivalist Rifle. Another Honest Hearts hitter. It's found at the Red Gate in a duffel bag. This one is a little strange. It uses 12.7 millimeter instead of 308, which makes this one a smidge tougher to roll with because you have to generally buy that round from vendors. The iron sights also seem to be misaligned, so I just fired this bad boy from the hip like Rambo. Mercy. Some people would consider a fully automatic grenade machine gun overkill, but I say, when in Rome, teach Caesar's Legion that slavery is bad. This machine. Yeah, this gun should be higher on the list, but I hate the iron sights with a passion. It's an amazing battle rifle with outstanding DPS, low VATS cost, and fantastic durability. It's even modeled after the M1 Garand, which is totally awesome. But man, that iron sight is punishment from God for something I did in a past life. Why? Why? Paladin Toaster. All you have to do to get this one is head to Black Rock Cave and it's found on the body of a dead prospector. It is protected by a couple night kids, so be careful, but they're normally pretty easy to deal with. 
Zap gloves are super fun and super funny. I've also discovered that this can be highly effective against one of the most dangerous enemies in the Mojave, the mysterious Glitch Scorpion. Maria. Benny's 9mm pistol. The same weapon that put a slug in your head at the start of the game. If you're anything like me, you make a point to get swift revenge. There are tons of ways to get it from Benny. Some prefer seduction, but I'm partial to destruction. 9mm pistols are a very strong option, and this one has better crit chance, ample ammo, great damage, and a couple extra points for style and sheer pettiness. Kind of makes you feel like John Leguizamo in Romeo and Juliet. Tesla beaten prototype. Or like Tesla Beast prototype. This thing is a monster. Basically an electro sniper rifle. Puts out an incredible amount of damage, fires really, really quickly. Sadly, this one only has half of the HP of a normal Tesla cannon, so you're gonna be repairing it constantly. But I love it. It's amazing. Pacentia. Who is the best vendor in the game and why is it Cliff Briscoe? Another dope weapon you get from the Dino Bite. This hunting rifle does some of the highest single shot damage in the game. And because this weapon has access to HP rounds, it even beats out the anti-material rifle and the YCS. The only thing that would make this any better is if it had access to mods because the three round magazine is pretty limiting. And it does give you a bit of like an enhanced zoom when you're aiming down sight, but popping a sniper scope on this would be amazing. Esther. You get it from the gun runners. It's literally the heaviest weapon in the game at 40 pounds. Unleashing the power of the atom should be reserved for only the most worthy of targets in the wasteland. Things that you want absolutely wiped off the face of the earth. Yeah! Who won the lottery? I did! Salt upon wounds, power fist. I mean, when you look at it, man, Honest Hearts really does have some awesome weapons. Upon completing the DLC, you get a hold of this power fist. After you hit a target, it does additional ticks of damage, like you're rubbing salt into the wound. Fisting your way through the Mojave can be a tough life, but this weapon helps it go as smoothly as possible. Fido. So I am kind of bending the rules of the video for this one. It's not technically unique because you can craft two of them, but it's named and it's from Old World Blues and I had to include it. It rips hard and I love the goofy 1950s sci-fi theming here as well. It's a heavy gun infused with a living dog brain. Like that's incredible. Come on. Oh baby. This is a shockingly powerful super sludge that delivers mammoth damage per hit. It's just a little sluggish. You'll find yourself struggling against large packs of enemies. A quick barrage of Cazadors can be problematic. If you're doing a melee run, this is a must acquire. It's so good. Despite its rusty, gross appearance, this is an absolute elite melee weapon. Annabelle. So it looks like we found a glitch to share with the boys on Reddit. For some reason, the New Vegas devs miscategorized this weapon as a missile launcher, when it is quite obviously a sniper rifle. But a word of friendly advice, don't let your target get too close. You grab this one from the Nightkin on the radio tower. I don't see a ton of people talking about Annabelle. I don't know if it's that they're not picking it up or they're just not into explosives. This one is an absolute sleeper hit. Thanks again for being here. It really means a lot, and I hope you're enjoying the video so far because we're about to move in to the final stretch. These next weapons are the best of the best. The kind of uniques that you build your entire character around. And this final tier I'm calling GG. Hood Springs, to make the theming consistent. From this point forth, it is only elite weapons. Once you get your hands on these, it's game over. First up in our top tier, a light, Shining in Darkness. Of course Joshua Graham's weapon is here. Was there any doubt? I mean, look at him. A superb rate of fire, solid damage, and a lightning fast reload. Like the majority of unique weapons, you can't mod it, but that would make this legitimately overpowered. Imagine this gun with a larger magazine. Ugh, it would be amazing, but the game would be broken in half. Medicine Stick. This is the unique brush gun you can buy from the gun runners, and it does every kind of damage possible. It has the second highest damage per shot behind the anti-material rifle and fantastic iron sights. The gun runners are generally pretty overpriced and they have just a bunch of gimmicky kind of nonsense in their inventory, but the medicine stick is 100% worth every cap if not more. Holy Frag Grenade, a cheeky reference to the Holy Hand Grenade from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's a pocket nuke, a throwable fat man, 
a baseball-sized apocalypse. You grab them from the church basement at Camp Searchlight, but you have to be really careful because you only get three. Three shall be the number thou shalt count, and the number of the counting shall be three. All American. I love seeing what we would consider a contemporary weapon design in the world of Fallout. Like there are so many classic weapons and homemade cobbled together kind of stuff, but this beast feels straight out of 1997 Marine basic training. It's a dope marksman rifle that comes equipped with its own scope, has fantastic handling, incredible in vats because of its low AP cost. I would highly, highly, highly recommend swinging by Vault 34 to pick this one up. It's also like the closest we get to like Call of Duty. <laughs> Alien Blaster, the true Fallout icon. You can only find this if you're using Wild Wasteland, but you should always be using Wild Wasteland to be honest, because it's the most fun perk in New Vegas. You can find a squad of aliens up north and take this weapon from their captain. It has zero shot spread, 100% crit chance, and fantastic base damage. And as a little bit of trivia, this is the exact same gun model that they used from Fallout 3. The only thing keeping this from being the best gun in the game is its limited ammo pool. The most you can get off the captain is 250, so make those shots count. Spurtle Wood 9700, premium laser destruction. This can be purchased from the Van Graffs, but we all know you'll probably end up getting it from the gun runners after you deal with the riffraff at the Silver Rush. Personally, I'm not usually a big fan of heavy weapons, but this one just turns you into a one courier army who could take on the entire wasteland single-handedly. And it comes with a snazzy looking Ghostbusters backpack. This is a crown jewel addition to any energy weapon arsenal. Fist of Roar or Fist of the North Roar. If you're using Wild Wasteland, you get an alternate name for this item that's based on the legendary Fist of the North Star. And if you don't get that reference, you're off my Christmas list. This is the only Deathclaw gauntlet in the game. You get it from defeating Roar in Lonesome Road and then crafting her claw into a weapon. It also gives serious Wes Craven's new nightmare vibes. Roar's claw is considered a quest item meaning it won't get stripped from your inventory when you enter dead money. So bring the claw inside, craft Fist of the North Roar, and you will slice and dice your way through dead money and turn that DLC into a total joke. This is one of the reasons why Unarmed is considered borderline overpowered in New Vegas. YCS 186. There is one benefit to not using Wild Wasteland. If you decide not to use that perk instead of the Alien Blaster, you can get your hands on this Gauss Rifle. This has the highest base damage of any non-explosive weapon in the game. Combine that with long range sneak attacks and there's nothing that can stand up to the might of this rifle. Being hit by this is like getting smited by Zeus from atop Mount Olympus. You delete anything you put your crosshair on. Greased Lightning. The Brotherhood of Steel might have been a small faction in New Vegas, but their weapons are on point. You get this from Torres at Hidden Valley after you progress the Brotherhood quest a little bit. It's a power fist with a stupid fast attack speed. You pair this with Super Slam and you'll send enemies flying constantly. The pinnacle of fisting. You can just hit people so fast, they can't do anything about it. It's, it's absurd. It's hilarious. I love it to death. Smitty Special. Okay, I can admit it, Van Graffs are scumbags, but their shop did have some nice inventory. I love that they used the original plasma rifle design from Fallout 1 and 2 here, it's incredible. This is a full auto plasma caster. What's there not to love? If you're looking for precision, this might not be your favorite weapon because it does have a, a fair amount of spread, but I personally don't think that matters at all. If you're rich and you don't mind wasting tons of plasma, this is the best way possible to spend your caps. Christine's COS Silencer Rifle. Strongest Silence 308 in the game. This is an outstanding weapon that belongs to the bald, beautiful Christine from Dead Money. Across the board, outstanding stats, built-in silencer for stealth murking, oodles and oodles of crit damage. I'm dodging sharing my full opinion on Dead Money because I feel like that could be a whole video, but I think a lot of people are hesitant to start Dead Money because of the commitment to staying in the DLC for the entirety. I'd argue that this weapon is worth rushing Dead Money for. It's so fucking good. I oftentimes don't go there first. I tend to do Lonesome for the Fist of Roar, then Dead Money, 
then Honest Hearts for like all the sweet guns, and then top it off with Old World Blues. But on an average run, I tend to use COS a lot. And all the lore associated with it as well, Christine and the Circle of Steel. This weapon really is a total package, and it's best in class. This is the greatest sniper rifle in New Vegas. CZ57 Avenger. Faster, stronger, better. There's nothing in this game that this weapon will not shred. The only minor downside to this weapon is that you have to deal with centaurs in order to acquire it. Those things are so gross. I hate those things. They're like late night TV, like basket case levels of gross. I would totally understand if somebody put this weapon at number one. But for us, this is the silver prize winner. And that only leaves us with the number one, the best unique weapon in New Vegas. Chance's knife. This combat knife is bonkers. So for those who don't know, after you exit Doc Mitchell's and Good Springs, you can grab a shovel and make your way over the mountain where the Cazadors are. There, you'll find Chance's grave. He was one of the great cons hired by Benny to hunt you down before the start of the game. But when you arrive at Chance's grave, you can dig it up and claim his knife. Fast swings. Hi DPS. It is very reasonable to think that you could pick this up within 30 seconds of walking out of Doc Mitchell's and use it until the end credits roll. And it just looks freaking cool. I mean, how badass is that? Look at that. Well, we've reached the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again really soon.